Thanks for giving us your time, uh, Peter. Um, what do you make of the start to the Premier League season? But, as ever, it's been exciting. You know, Manchester United getting beat 2 1 against uh, Southampton and getting back again and getting the results. I was at the first game, Manchester City playing Southampton, and that was an excellent game. And then I was at Goodison watching Everton and Manchester United. So I think it's been real exciting. Plenty of goals. I'm not sure about the defending. I think some of the defending and some of the goals, keepers, whether the ball's moving a bit. But in terms of entertainment value, I think it's been absolutely outstanding. I mean, your, your former club, Man City, uh, won the league last year. How do you think they're going to get on this season, defending their title and in the Champions League? In the Champions League, they've got a tough, tough group like they had last year. So, But they'll have, they'll have gathered a lot of experience from the, the Champions League um, last year, the programme they had last year. So hopefully they do. I, I think they, they could get second place in that uh, group. Uh, the league title, I think they'll go close again. I think they've got a... A real strong squad, and, and the, the thing I like about them, well, I think they've got the best young goalkeeper possibly in the world. I think Joe Hart's a, an excellent keeper, and I think that will help them. Um, brought in a couple of new players who um, will take time to knit in, but it'll be tight again. I mean, they only won it by goal difference in, in, in the end, so it'll be tight again, but Manchester City will be up there or thereabouts. So, I mean, comparing uh, Man City to a new other manager, obviously, is very difficult with the change in regime. But do you think that the culture of the club um, remains to this day? Yeah, the heart and soul are there. When you when you go there, and there's there's still a lot of people working there from when I was was there, and all the old players they look after, the Mike Summerbees, the Tony Books, the Tommy Boots, Dennis Stewart. I always see him there. So. The soul, even though it's changed from Main Road to the, the Etihad Stadium, the soul of the club's still there, which I think is good. I mean, it has got a great history and a great tradition, and it's still got that. Looking at the opposite end of the spectrum, you had an experience at Plymouth. Um, how was that as an experience? Um, because it's something that you know, more and more football clubs are facing as a reality, the financial difficulties. Well, about ten years ago I was in at, um, Leeds United when they, they had uh, financial problems. Uh, the Plymouth one, obviously going into administration and the club nearly going into liquidation was a very, very difficult task. You know, players and staff not getting paid and being made redundant. The human side of it comes in, you know, and uh, people struggling to pay mortgages. That's that was really difficult. But from my point of view, the best thing about that is Plymouth Argyle is now um, secure financially, and hopefully we'll go on from strength to strength. Yeah, hopefully, I think every football fan hopes that. Um, you also had experience in Thailand, um, and you said you you learnt a lot out there. What were the main things that you that you picked up? Just different culture, you know, they've got a culture where they respect the elders and so if you've got a young player who I wanted to be captain, he said no, he's the next in line, the next oldest down. So to break that down, and I'm not, I'm not knocking cultures, but on, on a football field, as you know, everybody's the same, you know, because it's a team. So it was that and... Um, I really enjoyed working with them on the pitch because football's universal in terms of technique and, and putting on sessions. But uh, that certainly helped me, you know, just dealing with different cultures and the way different people uh, think about the game and, 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 and the way, uh, as a team format, it is a little bit different. So it was, it was, it was good in terms of man management, managing players. Is it an experience that you would recommend to players and managers to go and play abroad and in places like Thailand? I think um, Eastern Asia, uh, uh, the Arab states, I think it's important to, to, yeah, to tap into different cultures. And I think, like anything, if you, if you can get that knowledge or experience or education, you know, for, where you're not linked with just European football, I think it can only help you. Um, speaking of European football, England are starting their qualifying for the for the World Cup today. Um, how do you think the squad shaping up, and what should be the expectation around the national side? Well, we should look to qualify. I think in the group, you know, and um, it, it's like anything else. We need to we need to the, the likes of Gerrard, Lampard, the experienced players. We still need them in there just to nurture the young ones. I do hope 
that we blood. I mean, well, will she get fit cleverly? You know, some of these younger players, Adam Johnson, if he's fit, hope he can he can integrate them in the team with the experience as well. I think that's vitally important. Um, and I, 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 they'll be well organised. No one right away. I, I, I do. They will be very well organised. First and foremost, qualify, but then bring these young players, integrate young players into the squad as soon as you can. I think we've all got. Yeah. Um, looking at the uh, football league now, you've had experience in there. Who are the um, the young players and young managers that people should look out for coming up for, for, from the football league? Well, it's 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 always difficult because when you when you're in the football league, uh, the Premiership's always sort of nick. I mean, Sterling used to be at QPR when they were in the football league, and Liverpool sort of signed him. You know, I remember Gareth Barry when he was at Brighton going to Aston Villa, so it's difficult. Joe Mason's a good young player who's at Cardiff, he was at Plymouth, and the, the aspiring managers, I think uh, the boy Robinson at MK Dons has done really well, Carl Robinson. So they're down there and, and, and ho hopefully, I mean, the likes of Chris Hutton got a chance, you know, and, uh, and Newcastle did a great job and is a, is a really good manager, so they're all quality coaches and managers and young players, it's just... We've got to give them a chance and we've got to play them in games and hopefully they can get uh, decent jobs in the Premiership. Good stuff. Um, looking quickly at your career, um, who was the uh, best player you played with and the best player you played against? Oh, there's, oh, there's, there's so many uh, you know, great players, Robson, Wilkins, Hoddle, you know, John Barnes, the fantastic Chris Waddle. Uh, who you play with and uh, against the best player I ever played against was George Best. I played against him when he was at Fulham. He is the best, without a doubt. Bar none. That's quite definitive. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's it. He, he, he left foot, right foot, Eddie, pace, tackle, score goals, make goals. What more do you want? Everyone wants to play like that. <laughs> yeah. um, and as a manager. Um, who was your uh, best signing and who was the best player you've managed? Ah, it's always difficult. I mean, it's always difficult signings because it's different positions, so I wouldn't categorise one. I mean, if you're talking about players who, 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 who looked after the dressing room and had charisma, Niall Quinn had that. He used to look after the dressing room besides being an outstanding player. So, but the, you know, Sorensen, Phillips, but it, it, there's, there's so many decent players that you know uh, are signed. It's it, I would find it difficult to to choose one. Um, and just our finally our, our signature question: uh, Why does footy matter to you? It's the best game in the world. Simple as that. There's no other answer. Great. Thank you very much, Peter. Pleasure.